And dude, I have to also room temperature superconductors. My fucking God, dude. Actually, that could be it. Like when I heard um, pretty recently that we found a room temperature asterisk superconductor, that was the first time in my life where I thought like, oh, this could be it. This could be the key to unlocking the theory of everything. This could be a theory to finally cracking, dare I say, perpetual motion. I never thought that way before. Um, I, not when we got the picture of the black hole, not when we detected gravitational waves, not when we thought neutrinos move faster than light that one time. Nothing. Nothing made me think this way, but superconductors, room temperature superconductors, oh my fucking god. And nobody ever talks about them. Like, you go on YouTube and you look up black holes and you'll see billions of views. But you look up superconductor technology, shit that's happening on Earth right now, nobody gives a fuck. Like, if things go the way that scientists think it'll go, Room temperature superconductors will be the most important of the, the most important invention of the 21st century. Literally up there with computers, the wheel, fire, like all you cannot underestimate how impactful they can be. How much they can change the world. All these businessmen, these like venture capitalists, like Shark Tank guys and all that stuff, they want to like find out the technologies that will lead the world to the future underrated technologies they want to invest in the next uh the next dot com whatever you know the next technology revolution if i was a betting man it's room temperature superconductors that's what you invest in that's how you get irrigation to every human on earth for the lower class that's how you get computers that are one percent in the price yet a trillion times the speed for the middle class and that's how you get flying cars and commercial rocket flights to Mars for the upper class. Billionaires all talk about like quantum computing as like the next gold rush. Yeah, if I was the CEO of what would be the next generations like AMD, NVIDIA, Apple, if that's my goal, if I'm going for quantum computing and I'm, I'm trying to, um, to, to push Moore's law to its limits, with with a new generation of computer architecture and i'm in charge of putting together a all-round r d budget for everything in quantum computing right so i get all bases covered processor storage ram which actually may not be needed because storage could in theory just be fast enough to make ram obsolete but um graphics as well as like funding different technologies that could allow for uh, small kinds of um, non-binary transistors and uh, new kinds of computing architecture at the microscopic um, I mean like yeah my microscopic level but figuring out what elements if I was in charge of figuring out these elements that would be used to create hardware that is optimized for different kinds of algorithms, different kinds of logic gates, lambda calculus, which is an absolute must, as well as encryption and graphics processing. And encryption has to be taken care of pretty damn early, otherwise you're setting up a foundation for a hellish future technology landscape. But say I'm in that position, I'm that CEO, and I'm thinking about all these things, right? I'm developing a budget that covers literally everything in quantum computing. If I was making the call, like 20% of the budget, at least 20, maybe 25% of the budget would go into research and development on room temperature superconductors. If you're a billionaire and you want to invest in the new tech revolution that will create supercomputers and solve NP problems and base any bit encryption and creates AI generated art and music and movies catered to be exactly what each individual person enjoys and, and simulate 
the weather months in advance, years in advance maybe, predict virus outbreaks, predict uh, uh, natural disasters, cure cancer, uh, develop uh, nanobots, um, sp like uh, solar sails, all that stuff. If you want to be the pioneer that gets the credit for all that stuff, then I'd, I'd place a few chips on superconductor technology, room temperature superconductor technology. And if you're an aspiring thinker and scientist and you want to enter a field that's going to guarantee to turn heads in the next 20, 50, 100 years and you want to get a lot of notoriety for being ahead of your time, like if you want to enter a field that's basically guaranteed to snag at least a couple dozen Nobel Prizes and you want some chances of earning one of those for yourself, this is the field you get into, in my opinion. I'm no expert. Just a hunch. Don't take my advice. I'm like, there's always a risk, okay? Hell, it could be, it could be possible that room temperature superconductors simply can't exist. But if I was a billionaire, that's a risk I'd be willing to take for funding the research. Because even the ones that require really low temperatures or uh, the pressure of a diamond press, they're still super useful. And they still stand to make a fuck ton of money. Like you can already use supercomputers to create um, sensors that can sense single individual photons on their own with deathly precision. Now you can set up some insane camera sensor setups with it. I'm talking about detecting photons. I'm like individual, not not light from a scene and then piecing it together with AI. No. I'm talking about detecting lasers from space, detecting flashes in neutrino collisions, detecting motion, right? Extremely um, rudimentary night vision or thermal vision, but extremely powerful. I could go on and on, but in general, I have no, di no doubt that the energy crisis is coming and it's going to take advantage of superconductor research in the future as well. There's a whole new world of technology and not even just the, like the world, I'm talking about beyond the world, like technology to be used in satellites and the moon and Mars and for, for sending things to distant stars. I'm not going to talk too much about this. All I'm going to say is like, if this works the way scientists think it'll work, it's, it's most likely going to usher in the newest revolution of technology and science and medicine and biology and meteorology and archaeology and fucking everything else while we're at it. And by the way, the guys who are really with the shit, who, who do their research and they know the potential here, they're already working on the R&D. They just keep it on the low key because they don't want other people to get the same idea. They know that this is a very under, underappreciated, underrated uh, area of investment with an extremely high likelihood of making a whole bunch of people uh, billions, trillions of dollars in the future. And they don't want everyone picking up on this and they all hop on the same bandwagon. But everybody who's really in the know Google, IBM, Microsoft, they've all made quantum computers using, you guessed it, superconductors. Literally, the, like, they're extremely expensive. And um, they use qubits, so not actual bits. And I don't even know if they run Lambda or not. So it's not like they could ever, like, it's not like they could just eat an entire crypto block in a second, right? Even if they had the compute power, I don't think they're actually designing these computers with um, current decryption usage in mind. Maybe IBM, uh, 
but I don't think uh, Microsoft and Google are doing that. But I, I think it's far more for the future of their companies, um, for, for more broad usage. I don't know if they've even bothered to um, set up a Turing machine model for them. I know that they can do calculation. They can do other calculation methods that involve like uh, vectors and like superpositions and stuff. But I'm, I'm not sure if they're really capable of doing lambda at their core. They might literally need to just simulate traditional computer memory um, to do it. But yeah, these guys all have heavy investments in the superconductor world. So it's not like nobody's on this shit. It's just that nobody talks about it. And I'm pretty sure from looking at Apple's financials that they aren't in the superconductor business. But it, it makes more sense for them to be in it than like any other company in the world. Like Intel is investing in superconductors. Amazon is. Uh, I'm pretty sure AWS even has a um, basic quantum computing thing now that people can buy, like quantum instances. I know Quanta Computer invests um, in this sort of technology. Alibaba invests in it. A lot of top-end universities. The entire country of China is, uh, well, theorized to be looking into it. They are, but... Look, there's, there's a difference between having substantial, like, definitive proof and knowing that it's true and i have no doubt that it's it's because of because of modern encryption because every form of encryption that we use today would just dissolve in the hands of a quantum computer that can do true rng apple's already you know making their own chips on their own assembly lines now like they're too invested in the future of computer hardware to not be in the superconductor business. Maybe they are, and I just don't know it. But I, I, I think they aren't. If I'm not mistaken, they're like one of the only big tech companies that aren't. Not to say I have like foresight in the ranks of Apple leadership, but, and like room, can, room like dude, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. Room temperature superconductors may not even have as much potential as I'm making them out to be, right? It's just a hunch that I have, it's just a gut feeling. But it's for sure not talked about enough. Motherfuckers talk about electric cars every two seconds. And like, talk about some big shit for once, you know? Not shit that ends up on the front page of every mainstream, like, all trending on Twitter all the time and all that stuff. There just, there just isn't much money going into research right now. I mean, like, there's a, there's a the million dollars, right? But, like, Tesla's worth a few hundred billion, is it not? But if I were to pick, if I were to pick, personally, if I were to pick owning Tesla entire, in its entirety versus owning all of the current R&D on superconductors, I'd pick the R&D. It's, it's, it's got a lot of money backing it. But relatively speaking, it's not enough. And it's ripe for investors right now. Either there is not enough money being pumped into the research, or Tesla is extremely overvalued. Or possibly both. But one of those, at least one of those statements is true. Who am I to say? I, I don't know. I'd rather not piss off Reddit. Let's move on. I have already pissed off Reddit enough. <laughs>